Good morning, UNF. You're watching The Early Bird, brought to you by Spinnaker TV. We're live from the Student Union. I'm Nicole Laura. And I'm Grady Trimble. We're going to have an awesome show today for yes, you. Yes, we are. We are still talking Halloween this whole week. We are from homemade treats to the best pumpkins. Even campus events, we've got you covered here today on The Early Bird. Yes, yeah, so make sure you stay tuned. And we also have weather, which is it going to rain on Halloween? That's the I big question. <laughs> Will it rain on the trick-or-treaters? We'll find out this morning on The Early Bird. In case you missed it yesterday, the blood drive is still going on today. Stop by from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. This blood drive is sponsored by the Department of Health and Dracula. A little suspicious that suspicious. the blood drive is out here on Halloween week. It the just, entire it's just week. so suspicious that it's every day. Yeah, every day. You know, <sighs> it was one thing when it was yesterday, but now they keep... You know, telling they us keep that coming it's every around. day. But it is going to be right behind us in the student union. And presumably it's going to go to help people instead yes. of go to a blood-sucking vampire. Yes, hopefully. We can only hope. <laughs> we can only hope that. <laughs> the Swoop Up Glix is coming. There's still time to sign up for UNF Zombie Run. But don't waste your life too much longer because the zombies are coming. Wow, that looks so good. Yes. It's so intense. I can feel the adrenaline in we, my body. We definitely have to do that. It's from we 4 do. to 8 on the day of Halloween? On Thursday, yep. Okay, so you get a little workout in it looks like by doing yes, that. Yes, you do. It's going to be intense, but it is a 5K. It's across campus. so It's, it's like the Walking Dead come to life. Real life. It's going to be UNF. scary. <laughs> <laughs> and UNF Asia will be holding its Halloween social tonight at 6. The club's mission is to bring the Asian community get together on campus. This social is, for me, just another excuse to wear my costume early. You know, <laughs> any excuse that I can find to wear a costume early is a great reason to. I have a nice Iron Man outfit oh, all planned Iron out. Man. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Tony Stark. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know, He's a good guy. To be good like guy. Him I can one see day. that. <laughs> yeah, so... so uh, Definitely going to be hitting up that, even though I'm not Asian. And That's fine. I'm you know, sure they're welcoming to I'm all, sure they're welcoming to everyone. You know, <laughs> yes, it's a Halloween party. You know, yes. get your costume on. I love wearing mine year round. Anytime. Exactly. I love year dressing round. up. So <laughs> we break the rules here on the early bird. We don't care. <laughs> and the big question that we asked at the beginning of the show: Is it going to rain for Halloween when I we're trick or treating? I don't know. I sure hope not. But we're going to have to ask Lindsay to see what she has in store. Ospreys, Lindsay Kilbride here with your early bird weather report. Now I hope it doesn't rain on Halloween, but I'll get more details on that later for you guys. I hope you did have a great weekend and start to the week. This beautiful weather will continue today with slightly warmer temperatures. Right now we're starting off in the 60s, so I would suggest wearing shorter sleeves or a sweater that can be removed during the day. Um, if you see right here, we have a high of 80 degrees today. Jacksonville Beach is a little cooler, 76. That's a little, actually a lot cooler because um, they're so close together. But um, it will be really breezy today, so that's probably why it's a lot cooler at the beach. I know 80 sounds very uh, but like I said, there's going to be a really great breeze today, 6 to 15 miles per hour. 
So if we see here, all the darker colors right here mean basically it's gonna be really windy. And then the beach is really, really dark, so obviously on the water it's a lot windier. So um, if you wanna have something to compare that to, it's gonna be 15 mile per hour for the highs for winds today. And normally 10 is really windy, so 15 is gonna be pretty drastic. I mean, for a normal day, it's obviously not hurricane season, or hurricanes right now, but for a normal day. There will be no rain today though, so that's really nice. Zero percent chance, um, unless something really crazy happens, probably not gonna rain. But now on for the rest of the week um, and the rest of the day, we're gonna go on to the three day forecast. Alrighty, so today it's gonna be a high of 80, like I said, um, and low of 60, but no rain, so really nice outside. Wednesday and Thursday, it's gonna warm up a little bit, lows in the mid 60s and a slight chance of rain. Thursday, Halloween, there will be a 30% chance of rain. So I really hope it doesn't rain at night. It is um, scheduled for later in the evening, but it's just um, smaller showers, so hopefully it's not gonna drastically affect your Halloween plans. Now, I'm not much for scary movies, but something I love about Halloween is carving pumpkins. Now, weather plays a huge role in the condition of your pumpkin, so I have a few tips to get your creations through the week so they are fresh for their Halloween night debut. First is keep them dry, out of the rain. It's really, really important. And if they do get wet, it's not the end of the world, but make sure you bring them in and immediately dry them off. And a really good tip is to throw them in the freezer for like an hour. They're gonna really dry out and they'll be good to go for Halloween. Um, keep them in the shade if they're outside on your porch. Make sure they're covered some way. Um, and you can even try to put them inside during the day if no one's home, no one's really seeing them. Um, the more that they're in a, con a controlled condition, like the inside of your house, it's going to be the best. So I'm going to let you guys get to carving your pumpkins and catch you back here on Thursday while I will have better details for your Halloween night so you will know if your costume is appropriate for the weather. Um, that's all I got for you guys today. So back to you, Grady and Nicole. Thanks so much, Lindsay. You know, great advice about the pumpkins, but yeah. I am a little bit disappointed about the 30% chance. I know, 30% chance. though, I think it's, it's not too bad. So I, it looks like it probably it's won't rain. Coming up on the early bird, we have cost efficient and creative costume yes. ideas, along with the best pumpkin patches in town. You won't want to miss the inside swoop. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get Come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Welcome back to the Early Bird on Spinnaker TV. As you know, it's Halloween week here, and this year there are some pretty popular costumes. However, Nicole happens to know a few tricks to treat your wallet well this year. That's right, Grady, I do. Now, of course, we all want to be Katy Perry this year, but not for the cost the Halloween store is selling it at. My solution? Homemade costumes. First, I have a solution of making a tutu. Oh, that's a good idea. It is a good idea, isn't it, Grady? I have... don't know if I would make a tutu exactly. Oh, yeah, uh, no, maybe not for the guys, it's but... Not a, it's not a gender-neutral costume? No. I, it could be, <laughs> if you're feeling like that, but... No, <laughs> if you're feeling actually, like... <laughs> yeah. for the guys, I actually have the solution of dressing for the decades, like the 80s oh, okay. or the 90s. Yeah, because one of my favorite movies of all time, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, See? That happens to be in the 80s, and I could dress as Ferris Bueller if I wanted to. And then I could just tell my teachers that I can't make it to class. Yeah, I think the it's the perfect excuse. excuse. The they perfect can't deny excuse. it, especially <laughs> if I do the tricks. Like he said, make sure your hands are clammy mm -hmm. and talk and cough when you're when you're talking to them. So I think it's I the think perfect you'll be plan to skip class on <laughs> Halloween. Other than that, though, if you have some old clothes, you could turn that into something new. Something like that. You could be a hobo always. You could. Take some raggedy exactly. Clothes. There's That's... also Goodwill down Beach Boulevard that you could run over to and just get. Lots of thrift stores on Beach to exactly. hit up and, and make pretty much anything. Anything out you of. want to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and after talking to our chief trick or treat correspondent, Ashley, we've compiled a list of the best places to go Thursday for the greatest candy in Jacksonville. First stop, Glen Kernan. Ooh, now, Glen Kernan is Glenn close Kernan. to campus, so it it's a perfect little place to. Uh, go if you're not trying to travel too far for trick-or-treating. Exactly. But there are some better places to go where there are even bigger houses. Yes. First stop would be Julington Creek.
That's Southwood and East and West Gate. So okay. um, if you're dressing as Gatsby or a flapper this year for Halloween, you can pretend it's East and West Egg. Yes. And, you know, obviously there are some pretty big houses there. <laughs> there are, you, you know, could you can really up. get into the theme of yes. your characters and just go out and just, you know, hit up all those houses over there. And, and then one more stop that you're going to have to make if you're hopping around Jacksonville going everywhere for all the best candy. You might be spending more money on gas at that point than on but candy. But I think it might be a little bit worth it. It's yeah. one night of the year. Yes, so the last stop I would recommend is going down to the beaches. It's yes. always a nice place to be anyway, but there are some big houses on the there beaches. There are. And they're, they're a little bit more spread out because you know, they're bigger, but it is a great place to get those king size candy bars yes, that we all a know. A great and adventure. Love. And you know, I'm pretty much an expert on trick or treating because I've been doing it since a child and I have not stopped <laughs> even throughout college. There's no shame no in that. No shame <laughs> at, at There's all. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, you can't celebrate Halloween without the perfect pumpkin. Luckily, my cat's named Pumpkin, so I have one year round. <laughs> but for those of you who don't, Jacksonville has many options. Now the first one I want to tell you guys about is Tommy's Pumpkin Patch. Now that's off of Co Co County Road 210, sorry. You actually went there this <laughs> I did week. go there this week, yes, and it was perfect. It was beautiful. It has hay rides also. I saw your pictures on Facebook and I was so jealous. <laughs> you were jealous of It seems everyone. like everyone I know went out to a pumpkin patch this week except me. Yes, because the days are going down, but you know, there's still time, Grady. Is, uh, is it acceptable to go to a pumpkin patch after Halloween's over? Yes, a lot okay. of people actually have the misconception that pumpkins are just for Halloween and mm -hmm. that's not true. They're for the whole fall season. Okay, so even after Halloween going into um, November, I can of hit course. up a pumpkin patch, yes. get myself a pumpkin and, and maybe not carve it. Maybe, maybe not carve it, but just have it for decoration. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. And I'll surprise my parents when I go home for Thanksgiving They break. would love that. <laughs> And then you also said like a lot of local schools and yes, churches have pumpkins. Exactly. Well. If you don't make it out to Tommy's, which is fine, a lot of local churches have them. Um, I know there's several down Beach Boulevard or just random streets. You can just kind of go out for an adventure and look for some. Awesome. Yeah. And before we get to sports, we do have to take a quick break. We have our hot tea here to enjoy yes, on do. our break. And we have some awesome Halloween themed bump music for you to jam <laughs> out to as we go out. Enjoy it. <laughs> We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's gonna get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com back to the early bird on Spinnaker TV. I was dancing to that bump You music. were dancing great. Yes, it you was. You were getting uh, into it. <laughs> yeah, always a good time. Now, as you know, we're live from your backyard, the Student Union. Yes, but speaking of backyard, now we're going to get to the down and dirty with Patrick. Hey Ospreys, what's up? This is Patrick Cavanaugh with your morning sports report. This morning we're going to be talking about men's tennis and a new friendly competition that took place last Friday where the men's basketball and golf team paired up to show off their skills. With saying all that, let's get started. We have an update from the USTA Clay Court Championships. UNF men's tennis team advanced both doubles teams to the quarterfinals this weekend. In the singles main draw, Norbert Nemstick defeated Zhao Guer of Florida State in the round of 32. He went on to lose to the number one seed, Roberto Quiriz of USC, in the consolation draw. Kyle Gomes fell to Manuel Belda of South Alabama. Also on the losing streak was our own Jack Hawkins, who was defeated by Eric Johnson of USC. And finally, Yannick Zern ended up withdrawing from the singles bracket. Now, this past Friday was the first time ever the men's basketball and golf team paired up to compete with one another in a competition called Jumpers and Putts. 
This new competition challenged players from both teams to utilize their skills in both basketball and golf. Teams were composed of two players, one being a basketball player and the other a golfer. Players were challenged to play one another's sport. The front nine took place at the UNF Golfplex and featured a variety of short game and putting challenges. The two player teams alternated shots to try to get the fewest shots possible. Then they headed to the courts for the back nine. Here, the players had to make three shots from nine different spots on the court, with their score reflecting how many attempts it took to complete the drill. Bo Beach was paired up with head golf coach Scott Schroeder, came in first place with a total of 61. Head coach Matthew Driscoll said that it was a great day, and we look forward to continuing this in years to come. Well, that's it, guys. That's all the sports news I have for this morning. I'll be right back here this Thursday with more. This is Patrick Cavanaugh signing off. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Patrick, for all that sports news. Yes, coming up, we have our viral video of the day, and it relates to Halloween. You're not going to want to miss this one. Yes, we're all treat and no trick here today. <laughs> Keep it here. <laughs> Looking for these? You drive buzzed. Could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Thank you for tuning in to the Early Bird on Spitaker TV. Tomorrow, we're going to be having more Halloween goodies yes, for you. Yes, I'm so excited. Tomorrow, I have uh, do-it-yourself decorations. Yes, you, you do, make. and I know you've been working hard on them. Yes, I showed it to you. you it's did. pretty awesome. They're so good. we'll have that for you tomorrow. <laughs> and as always, make sure you check us out on Twitter. At UNF Early Bird is the name. And while you're at it, you know you're on Facebook already. So always. make sure you <laughs> like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash UNF Early Bird. Now it's our favorite time of the day. Now time for the viral video. Ah, yeah. Just go on without me. <laughs> you see how slow he's walking? Oh my god. <laughs> Just go on without me. Do you think there's going to be anybody like that in the zombie run? Yeah. Somebody's going to fall. Somebody's definitely going to fall. Just go on without me. You see how slow he's walking. I actually think you might be that oh, person no. to fall. I'll be, I'll be, I'll sacrifice myself for You'll you guys sacrifice. to make it Thank though. You. Thank you, Grady. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, Ospreys. Great day.